A new theater company in St. Louis debuts with Unsuspecting Susan. We'll have details next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter. Welcome to City Corner. The inevitable theater company is new to St. Louis, and they're about to put on their first production. I'd like to introduce you to our guest today. Please welcome Robert Neblet. He is the company's founder, and Donna Weinstein is starring in Unsuspecting Susan. Hello, and welcome to you both. Hello. Hello thank you. Uh, Robert, I don't know you at all. <laughs> Donna, I feel like I know you. Yes. <laughs> Facebook friends. <laughs> A little bit more than that. You've been acting in St. Louis for how long? It's a pretty long story, but I, I would say actively for the last 20 years. Right. And, of course, um, I, I've worked at St. Louis Public Radio for a long time, and there have been many times over the years I've talked to you on the air about a lot of the shows you've been in, whatever. whatever. Right. Because how many theater companies do you think you've worked for? Oh, my gosh. Uh, all of all them. All of them. <laughs> well, I, I say all of them, but I have to say not Stages, not the Muni, and not the Fox. Because when you tell someone that you're an actor, uh, the first thing they say is, oh, are you going to be at the Fox? <laughs> and those are touring shows. Right. Nobody in St. Louis but is at the Fox. But you could be at the Muni. They do, use I would love to be at the Muni, but I think that requires singing and not my forte. So you don't sing. I am an actor who sings a little, a little. I was in a wonderful production last year of Great Gardens, and I, I had to sing, but the lead singer, Debbie Lennon, was, was the show. Mm. Uh, but uh, no, I'm not known for my singing. What about you, Robert? Are you a singer? Uh, I, I, I actually started out in choir. Uh, oh. but I, I was, was joking. A, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, but the thing was, I was a second bass when I was 13, oh. and so that was... Uh, that limited my possibilities of, uh, of singing anything other than the low hums in the background of everything. Huh. Uh, in the second part of this program, Donna, uh, you and I are going to talk a little bit just sort of about your career and your background here in St. Louis. Uh, but Robert, uh, I know you went to Washington University, you used to live in St. Louis, and you moved away. Can you give me a little bio? Uh, yeah, I, I, I came to Wash U in uh, 94 to uh, study in the performing arts department there. I got my MA, continued through my PhD. Um, while I was finishing up my PhD, I was involved in a lot of different theater ventures. Um, started working out of town in Nashville at the Tennessee Repertory Theater, which is now, I believe, the Nashville Repertory Theater. Um, and over the years, just kind of bounced around the country, found myself in Dallas for quite a few years, and when I was in Dallas, I started this company, uh, Inevitable Theater Company, and we did several productions, and then 2008 hit, and the economy went sour, so we went on hiatus, which turned into a much more prolonged hiatus than I had originally intended. Then I moved back to St. Louis after a stint in Arkansas, and once I was here, um, I wanted to kind of find my feet a little bit before I jumped back into the theater scene. And uh, um, I wanted to kind of jump in uh, with something that was manageable. And uh, this <laughs> show, <laughs> I say it's manageable. I'm not the one who's on, on stage for 80 minutes. Uh, um, acting with the set and and so the uh, but th I mean even the name of the company was uh, based on the idea that it was inevitable that I would be back in the world of the theater again yeah and then how, how did you two how does the guy come back to town which I assume you didn't know well I knew I had met Robert when he was here before and I knew who he was but we had never worked together right. no and he just emailed me one day in fact, it may have been messaged me on Facebook. I think that's what. I think that was. <laughs> and uh, said he was thinking of this one woman uh, play, and w would I be interested? And then he sent me the script, and I loved it. And I said yes. So this is a, a one woman play, mm -hmm. unsuspecting Susan. So who is Susan, Donna? Susan is a, a British matron. She lives in a small village, Hampshire, and um, her her life revolves around her church. Her flowers, her dog, she has celiums. 
Celium terrors. They're adorable. Expensive. I didn't even know. Donna what, wants a couple now. I, I didn't even know what they were <laughs> until I did this play. And then I saw a picture and I fell in love. And um, she has a son who is the apple of her eye and her entire life, practically. Well, not practically. She does amateur theater. And um, she's a bell ringer in the church tower. <laughs> is she sort of a fancy lady? Is she superficial? Y yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> I was made for this role. <laughs> no, she's, um, yeah, she, she's not deep thinking. She, she doesn't um, uh, go out protesting, and she just lives her quiet country life. She even says she likes the quiet life. She likes her walks, her dogs. She likes to make homemade jam and uh, act in the local theater uh, productions. She tends her flowers. Yes. She. Uh, part, you know, she goes to uh, the, the the pub at the end of the uh, at the end of the right. road for yes, sure. you know it, it's you know it's and she gossips about all of her yes. friends and her neighbors. I know people like that. Oh yeah, she loves to. Robert, gossip. what can you tell me about the playwright? Um, Stuart is a His name's Stuart Permutt is a uh, British playwright. Um, he is. Uh, he just had a play that opened, I think, last year. Um, but he's been writing for several for several years, um, and this play began in kind of the fringe uh, circuit in in England. It originally starred Celia Emery, who people might know from um, the uh, Best Exotic Marigold Hotel films and Calendar Girls. She had a small stint on Doctor Who. She's um, lovely, wonderful. She's, actor. Yeah, she's a wonderful actor. Um, dramatic and comic at the same time. Um, and it actually, one of the things that we discovered is that she performed this play in New York at the same theater that Donna was in uh, earlier this year? January, right. Mm. Yeah, I, and, thought, I thought that was such a coincidence. And, and that was, I mean, that was 12 years ago that, sh that this play was done. Yeah. Um, and in fact, the play is dedicated to a man named Dan Crawford, who was one of the leaders of the small fringe um, theater scene in London for a long time. So the play, the, the play is Unsuspecting Susan. What is she not suspecting? Well, it, as you say, I, you know, I, everything I told you about her is true, but it takes quite a turn. Uh, it gets a little um, dark near the end because she doesn't suspect things that are going on in the world. She just looks at things superficially. And, well, and, and her village is her world. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the things that are going on in London or Paris or New York or, um, I mean, even, you know, Manchester or anywhere else, in, you know, anything that's outside of her parish even, um, she's not, it, it doesn't involve her. We, we all have that at least a little bit, don't mm -hmm. you think? Oh, sure. <laughs> and we don't realize that uh, we have blinders on and that we... And the thing about Susan is she doesn't understand that she has some biases and some prejudices. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to ask you about a term, Robert, that you've used, polite prejudice. Mm. Which, it, it, does, it, does that make sense? No, it's, it's an it, oxymoron. It is an oxymoron, <laughs> but, but it is something that we encounter every day, I think. Um, what do you mean? Yes. Um, it, polite prejudice is a term, I don't know if it's an official term or not, I've been using it. Uh, but the idea that you're sitting at Thanksgiving dinner with Uncle Morty and then he says something about those dirty immigrants and everybody smiles and then just keeps going and we don't want to upset the dinner or we don't want to... You know, totally or, get it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and in St. Louis especially, you know, in the last few years, things have been very, very... Um, volatile in terms of issues about race and class and yes. and so I think that in that regard this play is very important because a lot of times people think oh it's rude to talk about those things but those are things that we need to talk about sometimes. Right. Donna I think there's m maybe a little part of uh, one of your dialogues you could share with us I think uh, Susan is talking about why she doesn't want to go to London I mean she likes her little small community I guess London's the big city right? Right. Yes. So do you want to share um, that with us or set I, it up? Or? I wasn't terribly happy when my son went to live in London. I try to avoid London as much as possible these days. You wouldn't believe the people I saw in Herod's the last time I went. As Mummy would say, strictly in QOCD. Not quite our class, darling. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say I was a bit of a snob. 
I would say I was a tremendous snob. <laughs> <laughs> and and here you get a, here you get an instance of the play is kind of light and comic at the beginning, but as the play progresses, it becomes. I wouldn't say, I mean, it, it, not darker, but it becomes more of a drama. Okay. And, and, and a key part of the, the plot involves your son. Do you have a good relationship with him? Or? Oh, of course. Um, probably too good. <laughs> I've, I make excuses for him all the time. I, I, um, I think that everything around him is, is, the problems that he has are mostly other people. He, he has a little bit of a, you know, paranoid schizophrenic <laughs> problem, but <laughs> I feel like he's a wonderful, good person. You think his mother's responsible for any of his problems? That's sort of what we just <laughs> we'd like to explore near the end of the show is um, whether or not many of these things are the fault of your parents or the people around you that subtly uh -huh. influence you. And that's that's kind of where that polite prejudice idea comes yeah. in. At what point do we, as a community, bear responsibility for these kinds of actions? Okay, before we wrap this segment up, and I, I know there's, um, there's an important part of the play, very dramatic, that we're not gonna give away, for obvious reasons. You referred to it as being dark before. What, what, can, you, what can you say? An act of violence occurs, and... Um, to her? Uh, no, not to her, but it, it is uh, an act of violence, and, and it does involve her son. And how we deal with those things and how we try to come back from And it things. does turn her world upside down. I mean, Completely. this little world that she paints for us in the first few scenes becomes upended. We've just got a minute or so left, but I know you're, you're planning some kind of panel discussions be, sort of relating to this topic. Yes, um, we're in the process of planning some uh, what I'm calling interfaith discussions about the role that we as a community, um, local, global, uh, have in looking at those actions in the world around us. And so I'm hoping to get um, religious leaders of all different faiths to come and be part of that. Well, uh, best of luck Thank to you. the new uh, theater company and its uh, production of Unsuspecting Susan. It's going to be at the chapel, which is just west of Forest Park. I guess that's on the edge of Clayton, right? It's right off of Skinker, right... Right if, before you get to Wydown. And, like, you get, if you get to Wydown, you've gone, like, what, but, 100 feet too far? Okay, if you can, that. You can get tickets at Metrotex. We also have a link to the theater company's website. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Robert, very nice meeting you. And I know uh, you've got to take off, but Donna's going to stick around and talk a little bit about uh, some theater stuff later. So thank you, Robert, for joining us today. Thank you. And we'll be back with more City Corner right after this. The angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome, innovators, dreamers, pioneers of the 21st century. We've been expecting you to come discover your dreams and make your ideas take flight. Just like so many explorers that came before you. Welcome to the hub of opportunity. Welcome to St. Louis. Always exploring. Potter. Welcome back to City Corner. Uh, St. Louis actress Donna Weinstein is our guest today. She is going to be starring in a play that's just about to open, or will be running, I should say, September 15th through the 30th at the chapel, and that's Unsuspecting Susan. Yes. What's this, uh, how many one-woman shows have you done in your career, Donna? This is my second. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to say seven or eight. No, no. 
But I'm much smarter than that. <laughs> no, I thought I was smarter than that. Uh, I did one um, probably eight years ago called Another Home Invasion, and it was lovely. And I, I, I made my way through it, and I thought, now I've done that. I can scratch that off my bucket list. And lo and behold, I'm doing it again. <laughs> How chat, you know, I'm not a professional actor. I've done a few little things here and there. And um, boy, that is tough being on stage by yourself. And, and you know, you're a seasoned uh, actress, but isn't it still like uh, sort of scary? Absolutely, I'm frightened to death. <laughs> Normally, I, I'm not nervous when I, people will say, are you nervous when you go on? And I'm not because I'm prepared. I know what I'm doing and I have a lovely cast around me. Uh, as a support group, but you're out there all by yourself. And it's it's different than, I, I have been a stand-up comedian for a lot of years, and that's, you're out there alone too, but people are laughing and it, and it doesn't really matter which order you do things And you can sometimes. say something stupid and get away with exactly, it. Exactly, and make a joke about it. Right. I'm, got to follow his script with this one, and uh, that's frightening. If we could just recap on Suspecting Susan for a little bit. Um, so it's about this woman that's sort of in her own little privileged world. Yes. And she's a little snotty? A little bit. Um, she's just very secure in her position in Hampshire, in England. She, uh, she has her everyday life. She has her order. She makes... Um, she makes homemade jams and cakes and walks her dogs and is really into her Anglican church and she's a bell ringer in the tower, does amateur theatrics. She has her own little world and everything is going smoothly. Until? Until, well she has a son who is 33 years old and he has just moved away from home for the first time because he has had some mental problems. Um, so she's been very protective of him, and now he's on his own, and she's a little worried about that. I take it there are probably some laughs, at least in the beginning. Yes, but, in the beginning, it's very lovely at the beginning. She gossips about her neighbors and uh, her life and um, kind of glosses over her son's little problems. But then it hits the fan at some point. Yes, pretty much, yes. Her world becomes completely turned upside down. Did you learn anything from this one? You learn yeah. something from every role you play, don't you think? You do, and I, I learned that um, what, our, what we do subtly in, in our lives can have a great impact without our knowing it. And we talked earlier about um, uh, polite uh, prejudice, and you have to be, I remember the, the song from Into the Woods, which was one of the few musicals I've done, but um, you have to be ter carefully taught, uh, you know, the, that, well, that was from, uh, that's from um, um, what, South Pacific. Right. But the one from uh, Into the Woods is children will listen. Be careful what you say, children will listen. Mm -hmm. And they interpret these things differently than you hope that you're saying them. And so... Mm -hmm. Be careful what you say well, about people. We haven't said too much about the plot of Unsuspecting Susan for a good reason, and we just hope people go out and see it. Right. But uh, can we spend a few minutes and talk about your career? Okay. Because you <laughs> don't look so scared when I say that. <laughs> You've been acting in St. Louis for a long time. I don't know, we just picked out some, some pictures of okay. you from various productions you've been in, and I thought we might you know, go down memory lane a little bit. Okay. See what you remember about them and so forth. So why don't we take a look at the first one? Ah. This is Donna Weinstein. That was uh, this past December in um, uh, A Christmas Carol at the St. Louis you know, the Repertory Theater. And uh, um, what role was that? That was I played several roles. That one was just a member of the ensemble, uh, the street scenes. And all those costumes were so beautiful. Each one was built specifically for each actor. And you look like a very pure, uh, yes. good person. Right, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful wig, by the way. What's this? This is um, Forget Me Not for Upstream Theater, and I played, the, the man in the forefront is uh, Jerry Vogel. I played his mother. I know Jerry, yeah. Yes, and Terry Meadows uh, was in it. He played an attorney, and uh, Maggie Conroy played my granddaughter. 
And that was, that was quite a sad play. That doesn't even look like you. I know. That was Grey Gardens. That oh, was my gosh. That was last year, Grey Gardens. I don't know if, you, if you're was familiar with Was that Max and Louie? That was Max and Louie Productions. Yeah. Right. And it was... Uh, um, well, of course, Grey Gardens tells the story of Jacqueline Kennedy's... Her her aunt, aunt, aunt and her and her cousin. Who were kind I, of... I played the aunt, and, and uh, Debbie Lennon played me as a younger person, and then my daughter uh, later in the second act, and was incredible. She won the St. Louis Theater Circle Award for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of awards, before we go on, before we talk about this image right here, uh, you've won a few, uh, you've won at least one I won Kevin a Kevin Klein. Klein Award. I was nominated a couple of times. What show was I that won. for? The one I won for was for New Jewish Theater. It was from door to door. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I played, um, a woman from age 35 to 90. And I remember when I won the award, someone said, you played 35? <laughs> I said, you're not questioning the 90, just the 35? <laughs> Hurt your feelings, didn't yeah, it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it was a wonderful production, huh. right? Let's look at the next one in the timeline here of your career. Come up in a second. I wonder how many plays you've been in all together, by the way. Oh, I have no idea. Oh, this was uh, at um, Ozark Actors Theater in uh, Rolla, Missouri. I played um, Lady Bracknell in The Importance of Being Honest. Mm, right. There's that accent again. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you do much work out of town like that? Uh, I've, I've done Ozark Actors Theater, and I've done uh, Arrow Rock Lyceum Theater. Right. Those are big regional theaters, and I've done those a couple of times. But, do you like uh, not going home at night? <laughs> After the Sometimes. show? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Have my own little room with my own little bathroom and quiet and peaceful. It's not so no, bad. No. Uh, I think we've got a couple more. Oh, and this was from last year when I did the Tennessee Williams uh, Festival, and I played Goldie, a madam in a brothel. <laughs> How'd you approach that? <laughs> <laughs> not from experience. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Donna. <laughs> I... Uh, it was a fun role to play, and I got to wear that fun little wig from the 30s, right? Yeah, I think we have one more. Nah, that's now, Donald no, Trump. <laughs> I, I was just going to say. Uh, who did your hair? This was for uh, a fundraiser <laughs> for the Fringe Festival this year. The one that just happened? The, the one that just happened. And they had a, a fringe, uh, they had a, a, a fundraiser, and I, it was called uh, Rumpelstiltskin. And I played the king. Donald Trump. <laughs> was it funny? It was very funny. It was. It was very funny, and I had a good time doing it. I, uh, I have played a man before. I played Mr. Potter in It's a Wonderful Life for Magic Smoking Monkey, so it's fun. Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter. Yes, I hear a lot of jokes about that uh, <laughs> character, as you can imagine. Yes. Oh, well, speaking of characters, um, we happen to be Facebook friends. Yes. And I saw something on Facebook the other day <laughs> about you and Marilyn Monroe. Me and Marilyn Monroe. Was, oh, was, that I was that Marilyn. I was Marilyn in a former life. Yes, I saw that. I take all those stupid little quizzes. <laughs> they're awful, but they're so much fun. <laughs> I mean, where else am I going to be compared to Marilyn Monroe? Uh -huh. And uh, other things I know from you from Facebook, and I say up front, you know, I don't know what that really means, but uh, I know you're you're a big golfer. Yes, I am, and that does not mean that that doesn't mean good golfer. It just means big golfer because I play a lot of golf. I uh, am a member of the St. Louis Women's Golf Association. We play all over, and uh, I belong to a league at Crescent Farms Golf Club. And I love the game. I do, and I don't think you have to be good at it. I don't know if you ever get good at it unless you're. Oh no! Wait, my dad's good. I got to. Is you. he really? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh wonderful! But how often do you play? I play a couple of times a week. Wow. I do. And then I, I still play tennis. God love me. <laughs> what else do you do for fun? Anything? Um, play with my grandchildren. And I now have four great-grandchildren. Uh -huh. uh, if we can kind of recap on um, Unsuspecting Susan, which is your current play uh, at the chapel, Talk about the collaboration with uh, with the director Robert. You know, on a one person play, I'm sure you've and this is the first time you've worked together. What's involved in that? It's like being a, a team, a tandem team. One is not good without the other, and you have to really be kind to each other and supportive, and um, and honest. 
Uh, I mean, you, you can't sugarcoat things. A good director tells you what needs to be addressed and, and, and how to fix it. But uh, uh, you have to have complete faith in someone to do a one-person show. And, and what goes into choosing what show you're going to do? I mean, you wouldn't just accept a job from anybody, right? No. Uh, and I don't mean that to be snobbish, but uh, sometimes I don't feel that I'm correct for a character or... Uh, um, Maybe it's at a place or a time that I, I'm not available for. I, I'm not, I'm not snooty. I mean, I will, I will do a good role, but um, it has to be something I feel I'm correct for. Oh, but your character, and I'm suspecting Susan's a little snooty. So, yes, she is, <laughs> absolutely. But I can play <laughs> that on TV. But <laughs> is there any role or anything that you've never done you'd like to? Well, there are lots of them, but that's in the past. <laughs> you know, I'm past. I'm past the ingenue, and and there would have been wonderful roles that I would have loved to have done. But but now um, they get fewer and fewer in my age bracket. Yeah, is that frustrating to you, or I mean, can you accept that gracefully, or did that kind of make you mad? Um, I, I it doesn't make me mad that. Um, that I can't do them because there, it just makes me mad that there aren't more roles for women of a certain age. Mm -hmm. Yes. Speaking of that, happy birthday. Thank you, yes, it will be, yes, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> and the, your birthday just happens to be during the run of Unsuspecting yes, Susan. Yes, absolutely. So does that mess up your plans a little bit? Or? Well, I'm sure that there'll be a martini wait, waiting for me <laughs> after, afterwards. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Anybody else on the, on the you're, you're the only one on stage, but people behind the sets, how many yeah. people are involved in a one-woman show? Uh, in our case, there are four. <laughs> There's um, our, well, there was a scene designer who never came in, but Robert, my director, uh, worked with him. He got the plans from him, and then he, actually, Robert, my director, has been wearing all the hats. He's, well, uh, he's done the sound. He's done this, the set construction and uh, uh, directed. Well, Donna, it's always a pleasure to see you on stage. A lot of people have, and I hope they see Unsuspecting Susan. And thank you so much for spending some time and break a leg. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Donna. I'm Steve Potter. That's all the time we have for this edition of City Corner. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join us next time. Bye. So. Oh,